What's up, everybody? It took a hell of a long time and too much headache to make this happen. How do I? There we go. Beauty. But we're finally ready to go. And we're going to be casting a pretty good first match, even though it's not the first match of the day by any means necessary. It is like... It's the this, first match of our day. This is group two we're already in, right? Like some, uh, anyways, It's Semper versus Jig. For those who don't know who this is, this is Dave. We'll give him some love as we get into the game. But let's get into said game because... Is that ringing? You heard that too, or is that just me? I heard that too. Okay, uh, I'm like, did I just get a severe tinnitus attack? Like, what just happened? <laughs> that was a sign. It's time. It's time for some StarCraft. All right, and I'm going to tweet really quick. Finally live after many <laughs> tech issues. Rifkin and Dave. Well, Steadfast. E what do you prefer, Steadfast or Dave for more casting? Uh, does, uh, I guess Steadfast. Doesn't matter. I'll uh, I'll take it as I can I can get it. All right, and you guys are gonna have to just deal with this for a second here because uh, we are just getting live finally after many issues. Jig versus Simper. I should probably tag them because that would actually make sense. I'm sure they'd like that. Would they though? Because if somebody decides to troll me and reply to the friends, which is Jig's Twitter? Jig saw You know what, Jig? You don't get it because it doesn't automatically Ooh. come up. Not because I hate you. Hashtag WCS. All right. Boom. We're live. Get on Base Straight TV. Give us a retweet. Share what's going on. We're late to the party, guys. And we need to get some friends and fam involved. Real quick, though, to explain, we had like five minutes of testing. We didn't really get to run through things. So please, we cannot check chat as we're going. But leave feedback there. If you want game sounds, our sounds fixed, you name it, we can try and fix it. But yeah, we'll get into the story of that later. Let's just hop into these intros. Dave, you want to kick us off, dude? Absolutely. Spawning down in the bottom left position of Acolyte, we have the Blue Terran player, Semper, representing that Root Gaming. And of course his opponent in the top right, he's actually, I believe, somewhat local, as I do know he is a Quebecian player. I believe that's the totally accurate phrase, by the way. Uh, it's Jig! Who that is absolutely accurate. We've actually, so we haven't seen a lot of Jig on base trade TV. For those who don't know Dave, however, Dave's probably seen more of him than I have because he plays the game, unlike this wannabe caster here. Wow. Uh, yeah, Jig is actually a very, very talented player. Uh, really flies under the radar, but some... I, I, I would not be surprised if he doesn't, uh, or if he makes it to the round of 32 and maybe even a little bit further than that. Uh, definitely has a good shot of making his mark here. Well, the problem I have is Semper is kind of in that same boat. Like, Semper's a player who, he's got yet to really break out and make his big, like, here's my performance, I want a dream hack. But the beauty is, like, whether it was WCS running Montreal, whether it's DreamHack running Montreal, it, it's these types of tournaments, especially region locked, we've been seeing people come out who have not won major, like a laser, fantastic player. We see him all yeah. the time. Finally won a dream hack. That's his name on the map type thing. That was that was really exciting actually when that happened. I, I loved that. Uh, he was, and it was funny too, he kept getting knocked out by Cyril and uh, he was like, oh man, I just need Cyril out of the way. I just need Cyril out of the way. And people often say that, but then it doesn't like that'll happen and then it's just kind of hot air that they're blowing. But then Cyril got knocked out and he won that event. It was awesome. It was like, man, Really, the only thing that's been holding you back is just Zero. By the way, sorry guys, I was trying to get Twitch uh, up on my phone, so we missed a little bit of Reaper scuffle there, as you can see. Reaper for a lane dive, but not much else, because there was a build cancel and Jig was on top of things. But now we have a little bit of Twitch chant. I've just kind of, I've laid my phone out in front of me and Dave, and we'll see how, how well this works. It's not very good. Everything today is, uh, We'll call discount casting. Yes, uh, that was actually quite interesting though because he got that uh, that Reaper. Now Semper can't scout and uh, Jig goes for a very fast layer before Ling Speed. So he is actually gonna be going for, I think the fastest Mutas you can get. Well, I actually really like Mutas. Not a lot of players are playing them anymore because obviously Hydras, right? They've taken over the role of it. If this is gonna be a Muta game, the beauty in that is Semper might also not expect it. But I do need to bring up and remind you all who haven't been watching Semper through the WCS Montreal qualifiers themselves and other various things, he's been playing really offbeat. And I don't mean like, oh, it's a bio player playing mech. I mean, this is a guy who went straight battle cruisers to deal with carriers. Like, And I, I'm hoping to see something crazy and unique out of Semper today. But at the same time, I know he's a good player standard play. And regardless of whether it's Mutas or otherwise, and it is going to be Mutas, uh, ooh, he's even kind of hiding it. I love That's this. That's a nice touch. I like that. 
Well, to just cap off my point, I just hope he plays well. Because I know Semper has a lot of strengths that he can play too. But this is going to be tough to scout. I think if the medevacs dance between bases, it'll be fairly obvious. But a lot of the times now, this medevac just gets pushed out the way it came back in. Uh, so this is actually... We're, we're going to be seeing this drop coming in, but this is actually interesting from Semper. We have a, uh, a Banshee, a uh, Cloaked Banshee follow-up, as well as what's going to be Hellbats. And with that super fast Spire, if he can't get a bit of damage done right here, uh, I think there's going to be Mutas out in time for that next one. Uh, what am I on Burrows? I kind of like that because it saves wasting it on like, one Zergling, but ultimately it's not going to get much. In fact, completely denied if that build cancel out of the Jig. That's twice now, once with the Reaper, once with the mine. The Micro is definitely there, but uh-oh. The Sneak Attack of the Hellions comes in. Only drones in the for now. Six go down pretty quick. Eight. That was really, really You know, when we were in Austin, we heard about the barbecue, but I didn't hear anything about that when it was coming to Montreal. Yeah, it's uh, definitely not a specialty, but uh, Semper pulling it out nonetheless. All right, so quick question, guys. We were kind of just adjusting on the fly according to the chat. Uh, people were saying Dave's mic was popping a lot. We actually don't have pop filters on this. That's a whole other story, but it should hopefully be better now. If anything's too quiet, too loud, again, we actually have Twitch chat now. We didn't have this before, so we can keep trying to adjust. I think after the first, like, best of three, we'll be good to go for the rest of the day. But again, this is the downside to not having a lot of time to do uh, testing. So thank you guys for helping us make this a better broadcast for everybody involved. And uh, we do see several of us here right now. We're actually going down behind us. Uh, might be expecting that old school uh, kind of. Oh, wow, those are for the mutas. Look at where those are. Uh, so, placed. this is kind of cool. If you build a turret, technically you could waste the turret for the whole game. It would never get attacked, it would never get an action on the muta. The bunker, you can salvage, though, if you never use it. So, it's a really cool idea. For sure, but it does require attention and maybe it won't be as effective either. As you see, they're actually denying the engineering bays. And I'm now realizing he didn't even have an engineer bay. He had to go bunkers. Yeah, this is actually brutal. He's taking so 21 much SCBs. damage. Oh man, those fast units caught him off guard so hard. Right, and this goes right back to the fact that I don't think we've seen Jig do this every game of the series. This is totally like a hey, you're used to seeing Hydras, let me get you off guard build. Yeah, seriously. Oh man, look at that engineering bay too. It's, it's on. Like, whatever, like 36 of 36 or whatever the number is right now. Oh, still doesn't get it finished, and I don't know, that man. Is that's 25 okay. 25 that is 25 out 25, but fully 100%. That, this is just so much damage right now, and he's going to take even a lot more. Well, he's getting a little bit of damage back with the Banshees. Targeting down the spawning pool. It's a kind of an interesting concept to cut out the ability of Lings to, but there's, there's no need at this rate. It's the Mutas that are going to win the game. Oh man, and they are going to be winning that game. We uh, we have 41 SCVs are dead. Uh, meanwhile, Jake has himself a third base on the way. Only 44 drones, but 44 drones are converting at 14 SCVs. Uh, I know who I'm favoring. Right? Yeah, it's definitely going to be Jake. That hometown hero really killing here in this first game. Hometown hero could be other hometown hero. Oh, I keep forgetting Semper's from yeah. here, because of course he's been in America, he's been across the East Coast. like. Oh, even takes down the turret in the natural. This is yeah. GG. That's going to be GG. All right, Jake takes the first game in the series, but beauty is that it is only the first game, so plenty of opportunity to come back. Uh, let us know again. I know, again, we were fiddling with Dave's mic. Just give me a quick, hey, hello, how are you? Hey, hello, how are you? So if that needs to be quieter, louder, well, probably louder at this point, uh, let us know, guys. But a tiny bit more on Dave's mic, it should be perfect. All right, one sec. This is really intimate, like more than it should be. <laughs> And mm -hmm. we'll that was that. the right amount of intimacy, I think. Uh, maybe about, uh, yeah, like 5% more intimacy. Shout out, uh, shout out to chat. Uh, okay, what was the next game here? They had Interloper as the next one. All right, let's get this going. Oh, man, that was such a smart build for the map. Um, you know, I, I, I don't even know if that would have been map specific, though. That could have, I see the way he played that out, mm -hmm. really, I think, could have applied to any map, if we're going to be honest. Like, the surprise element was the most dangerous thing he did. Yeah, but it was it was so much more so because you never think that a player is going to go two base on a, on a map like that. It, it doesn't even really cross your mind. And uh, even with picking off those nine drones in the natural, the SCVs, or why wow, the SCVs, the mutas just caught him so off guard and he killed. That was the most effective muta harass we've seen in a very long time. I'm going to say in all Legacy of the Void, frankly, because in, in Heart of the Swarm, you actually had people doing two base mutas. That yeah. was a thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Impact was actually a big trendsetter for that, but it looks like players are ready to go. Um, we'll see if he goes for it again. I really, I want to believe that he, 
Jig has never been a one-trick pony. We've seen him do cool things with roaches and burrow with roaches and variety with macro. I really don't think that he'll he'll have to rely on a, a gimmick to win versus Semper, but this is a strong start. It's a very strong start, and that's for Semper. Semper's not a player who really gets tilted, but anyone after a game like that is not going to feel the greatest. No, I, I, I'm so glad I'm not a pro player, dude. I'd be so tilted. After game one, I'm just like swearing and cussing, getting thrown at WCS. <laughs> all these fines coming my way. But all right. Uh, actually, this score is wrong because I flipped the players. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You're watching WCS Montreal live here from the venue. Me and Dave. Dave, a.k.a. Steadfast. And uh, we'll be getting to these here with top left, the Blue Terran, Root Gaming's Semper. And spawning down in the Whoa. bottom right with a cheeky two-base Muta play. We have the Zerg player from Team Root. It is Jake. All right, I got to adjust that mouse sensitivity or this keyboard sensitivity. Normally, this is at one. Oh, wow. That way, I can do cool pans. Ah, Looks smooth nifty. and nice. Ooh. But instead, it was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a nice little cruise ship. Like, just like, yeah, you just get like gently cool angles, across the water. A little bit yeah. different. Oh, I feel so relaxed now. So, yeah. so homey. So serene. Well, it's because there's no real army units yet, right? Yeah. There's nothing to be scared of. But with the barracks on the way, maybe there will be. I'm, I'm going to say, I don't know where Samper's really at in the game because of the goofy builds I've been seeing him play. But man, it sucks in a way, obviously not for you as a Zerg player, when the Reaper got nerfed, because Samper was doing a lot of cool things with Reapers back in the, I guess, heyday of them as well. Well, I remember there was a build, uh, I'm not sure if he pioneered it, but he was one of the earlier players to do it. It was... Instead of getting the first Reaper, you went straight into a reactor, and you actually got six Reapers. And uh, now this is a while ago, but he, this might have even been uh, Heart of the Swarm, uh, but it was six Reapers, and you yep. just used them for harass, and you used the grenades, and they actually uh, worked like Hellions, and they were really quite amazing, and he controlled them so, so, so well. Yeah, there's, uh, do you know uh, European Terran player Optimus? Yes. Optimus was the only person I've ever seen go up eight racks Reaper. Eight racks. Eight racks Reaper. Reaper. It was like in a Corsair Cup, and he won with it too. And I was just Ooh. like, I can't even believe what I'm watching right now. It was the, you, you, you're like, is this a meme build? Is this a real thing? Speaking of uh, speaking of tilt, that is uh, that is the kind of build that tilts you. Um, when you when you get memed by your opponent and you know that they know, and it still kills you. Oh, nothing's worse than that. It's the sharpest knife of a mind game. It's yes, that's that's a good way of putting it. Oh. Uh, well, Bit of poke at the front. We didn't get to watch this last game, but we did see that Jig had managed to lose only barely a Zergling. He did some build canceling with the drones, and I really don't think this Reaper is going to get to do much. In fact, it might not even get to scout at this rate. So busy uh, trying to dance in the natural. Oh, does not get the, but does force the spore out. Doesn't get the drone, but does force the spore. Um, this actually, I think, is a big deal, not because it did anything substantial. Killing two Zerglings is nice, but because he didn't lose it, and it's going to provide him that scouting. It's well, a big difference from the last game. That's where it gets to the maybe part of this, right? Like, there's only really one way in here, and he's been denied it so far. And for Semper, I think above anything else, that Reaper, it's almost worth sacrificing. There we go, finally hops up. To see whether it's going to be that two base build that just killed him, or whether it's going to be something like a little more standard. Like, we, we can see, obviously, three bases. This is what you would expect out of a Zerg. For Semper, somewhere in the back of his mind, you're like, would he really go two base building? Would he really meet me with a fast layer? Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's really necessarily concerned about the build. I think it's more of just a comfort thing for Semper. He really likes having those units he can get active with, um, kind of take the fight to his opponent and uh, know a little bit more, just for sure. Yeah, I was pointing out by the way. Sorry, just checked the scouting. I didn't think he had seen the third that whole time. I was about to talk about the gases, but while he didn't see the gas timings, he did see the third, and that's all he really needed to know. Yeah, at this point in the game, if you have a third base, you really can't be going for any fast tech. And uh, we do see it is going to be what's become the standard build in uh, TVZ these days. It's going to be the uh, Hellion Cloaked Banshee. I actually uh, like this because this has circulated around ever since, like, I don't know, I would say like the original builds, right? Yeah. Some variation of it. Cloaked Banshees, I have been recently watching Wreck, but I feel like anytime I've ever tried to do them myself, that works. <laughs> it's it's so easy to uh, to just let them dance into a spore crawler range and uh, just just lose them. Well, what was beautiful was, uh, of course, some of you may have seen this, but for those who didn't, we recently watched Beastie 1v2 in an Archon mode matchup against the Laser and Harstom. Oh, wow. And Banshees, like, single-handedly won that series. So in a TVZ, when done correctly, Banshees can sometimes be monsters. But I don't know. Jig right now, there's no spores. There's no fast, like, anti-air coming out. Now's the odd spore crawler, too. 
still a little bit of window of opportunity because this is not exactly covered. No, it's not. Um, this yeah, does he have a spore in the main? I know not in the natural at the moment. He's but, building okay, one now. Okay, he's just building them. Um, this is kind of a, a bit of a bluff from Jake. So he shows the spore at the third. Uh, and Semper's not going to rush to the main. He's going to assume that all those spores got started at the same time. But by the time he actually does get to the main, the spore will be finished. Oh, I love this other jig, too. The spine crawler coming down is a really nice touch. I saw in the production tab, and I was wondering if he had misclicked it or was like going to cancel it or something. But letting this complete with three queens, this definitely handles Hellion run by his. Yeah, I, I would like to see him move it just a little bit further forward to get full coverage on that uh, entrance well, into the Then it'll take the ten years to reburrow, though, Dave. Yep, <laughs> and that's that's the time when the Hellions run in. They don't even need to see it. They just they're magnetically drawn to the unburrowed uh, spore craw or spine crawler. In the time it takes a spine crawler to burrow or unburrow and reburrow, I've had two children, one of which is graduating college, the other has dropped out and chosen to do something else with his life, and then it burrows. Yep, that sounds about right. I wonder, they nerfed that a lot, but I wonder if they've ever considered reverting it. Because Spore Crawlers are like instant up and down. Yeah, Spore Crawlers are 6, uh, Spines are 12. Although that's old time, so I don't... I still know everything old in... Old uh, time! Part of the swarm time. That doesn't actually see on the tooltip either. Uh, so we do have... Uh, this is a little bit off off beat. Normally we don't see Zerg players going for uh, just a few roaches to add in. Uh, I wonder if he'll add in some... Ravagers, just to help out his army. You know, that's something I've, uh, Nurture has done for a while here and there. Bly's been doing a little bit too. Where you, regardless of what you're committing to, you get a couple of the other turns, right? In Bly's case, it's Mutas. In other people's cases, it's a couple of Ravagers to pair up with the Fungals. I love when that stuff happens, but it does look like these are just waste for units right now. And he's just kind of using them as cannon fodder to keep that hatchery alive. He knows he can't really jump on these Hellions with the lakes, so sends them up north. They're gonna not be able to deny this base, but one can chill underneath, maybe? Nope. Uh, we do see Burrow coming down for uh, Jig. Wonder what he's going to be doing with this. Uh, also to note, his upgrades are very far ahead. Almost uh, half the duration ahead of Semper right now. Well, unless he gets started on that 2-2, um, might not be that big. There we go. Big of a deal. Uh, I guess it is worth noting, though, that it is melee, considering we had contemplated, like, would he be doing something with the Roaches? You see Burrow come in, you'd be dealing with Burrow movement speed or something, but uh, it's just Burrow for the sake of Burrow. I love Burrow mechanics, too. You, on Interloper, especially when there's, like, three main paths you're watching, right? That one in the middle and the two on the outside. You just put a lane at each of the each of the base points, and you get a pretty good chance you'll see the army coming. Yeah, it's, uh, Burrow is one of the most underutilized abilities in the game, I think. I feel like that's true, but then the few times that players actually use Burrow well, it looks so broken, It right? looks really broken, like, exactly. Take TLO with his Bane Lengths. The yeah. guy is so good at hiding them in the middle of a fight. Burrows two, runs away with the rest, explodes as they chase. Yeah. Uh, scouting with Lings or Roaches with Tunneling Claws, doesn't matter. Burrow can sometimes be really cool, but uh, we'll see how far it gets this game. There's four Hellions dropping on the right side of the map and two Medivacs heading south. That is a lot of Banelings coming in for a big bust on the third. Uh, this obviously is not an all-in play, but it is it is a play where you really want to catch your opponent off guard. And this is kind of uh, Jig's... It's kind of Jig's stamp in the matchup a little bit, is that that lifestyle we used to see where it was 1-1 one, one, uh, Lings with speed banes. And uh, we do see he's going to break through at the third base. Oh, that's not even a full wall, so that saves him like six panels right there. But even then, rolling in, they try to go for the Marines. Tank was focus firing initially off of creep. The spread's too good. And Semper actually holds this pretty damn well. I don't think he lost a single SCV. Oh, he actually held that immaculately. Well, for now, this doesn't quite offset Jake. He's at least on four bases. His drone count might suffer a little bit as a consequence of what's been going on. Right, like he'd be much happier at, say, 70, but still, if it's enough to produce 50 some odd lings and bailings together at any given time, I think you got enough money to, to work with. Yeah, uh, that was that was nicely handled by Semper, though. If, if I were Jig, I don't think I would want to try that again. Yo, also, I gotta give a quick shout out to Terminator and Admiral Awesome. They're literally creeping in front of us right now, just chilling on their phones. They probably don't have volume on, so they can't hear us, but guys, do me a favor and chat, and just, uh, just call them bugs or something. Nice. The Terminator is a butt. Admiral Awesome is a butt. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Failings roll in, but of course there's that tank once again sniping off a lot of these units. Downside is actually this tank doesn't have weapon upgrades, so it's having a hard time dealing with the Failings and Zerglings. And with his factory getting taken down and the space being shut out, even though he's killing a base on the other side of the field, Semper's hurting him real bad at home. Yeah, this is uh, losing that fourth base and having the third base shut down is not ideal. 
Uh, but I think he's gonna get a lot more counterattack damage done if he handles this army correctly. Oh, and Vesper popping out in the wrong place right there. Oh, you get the chest trade. Yeah, Infest are actually getting that. Oh, almost get wow. taken out with Fang's last breath, I was going to say. Uh, uh, so for those who don't know, there's a really important dynamic here with the way Simper's chosen to play. Tanks are a perfectly appropriate way to respond to this. However, if you don't have that upgrade and Zerg have any armor upgrades whatsoever, you no longer one-shot the Zerglings. Yeah. But the beauty is, once you get one level of tank upgrades, it doesn't matter what armor they have. Like, it's a real silly back and forth between them, but it is the difference of a lot of Zerglings barely surviving with one health versus a lot of them dying upon the initial volley. And the fact that a lot of them are not dying, you'd almost say Woodwinds would be better. Simper's in so much trouble here. Unless these tanks get the perfect focus fire on the Banelings, he can deal with the Zerglings, but not the Banelings, and he's not focus firing, and it's good to get him killed. Ooh, this is rough, and it's 1-1 one, one versus 2-2 two, two right now. Uh, plus two with weapons. Oh no, the big, wow. That's a good pickup, actually. I was uh, about yeah. to panic for him, but still, he's bleeding out 20 SCDs. He's not clear of this yet. He's taking a lot of damage, and he's still going to take some more. Three orbitals is nice, but that's not going to make up for losing, what, close to 50-something workers this game? 55. My god. Oh, man, this is absolute murder on these, uh, these SCVs. I think its total kill count is going to be over 100 SCVs in these two games just so far. Well, if this game drags on long enough, it might be this game alone, right? Ooh. Like This is kind of crazy. Uh, Command Center is burning. He's got to lift it. Can't afford to lose it. He's in such a bad spot as is. Tank sets up and on the front line, so it's going to go down. Surrounded by these links. A fumble oh. catches the Metamax. No running. Poor Semper. There that burrow comes in, and it's not. Oh, it's going to be real close. Semper is holding on, but the rally is going to be so scary. Uh, we do look at the army's flying. We see it's reasonably close. Mm, that Command Center is going to burn, though. Oh, wait, SVs are repairing it. I take it back. Oh my god, this thing got double digits though. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was really close. The um, unfortunate thing is, when this trade happened moments ago, Semper killed a base and retaliated. This time, he's just bleeding at home. No repercussions for Jig, and Jig's just able to continually reinforce. He's on high tech. There's the GG! And our Quebecian Zerg <laughs> takes the 2-0. That, uh, that was not a result I expected. I was definitely expecting a pretty close series, and uh, Jake kind of... I was expecting Semper to take it, frankly. Yeah. I mean, I know Jake is good, and I want to make sure I pay him the appropriate dues, but that's still a bit surprising to me. Absolutely, and uh, look at the speed on Jake, though. Uh, 400 APM. Uh, oh, now that's Zerg APM, so it doesn't count, right? Yeah. Um, nice larva mechanics, bro. Heh. <laughs> but really, though, that was... Uh, that's pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good, too. But now we got to go figure out if we even have another game to cast yet, because there's a there is a schedule to stick to, guys. And some of these matches can't start until other ones finish, type thing. It's not just a simple bracket like we're used to seeing here on the channel. So again, thanks, Dave, for joining me for the casting today. Uh, he may come and go. Other people may come and go. I have no idea. Frankly, the whole plan was to come here and solo cast, and just whoever comes in is great. I'm glad to have help. But we're gonna go to break, and I don't know how long it will be. Just thank you guys kindly for joining us, and we'll be back with more when we have more.